Hello, my name is Andrea, and today I'm going to be painting a realistic fly. I had this idea for an animation. It starts off with a series of shots of a fly taking off. I wanted these shots to be as epic as possible, so my idea was to make it super realistic. I know animation and realism don't really go together that well because, you know, 24 frames per second, if it's drawn realistically, that's like impossible but you know we'll make it work we'll do some puppety something or other <laughs> let's get started the first thing we have to do is find some good reference i always start by doing a simple google image search you're going to want some pretty good reference for drawing realistically so i'm looking for multiple references for each of the angles i want to draw if i can find them I find sometimes searching for photography helps yield better results. You can also try searching in some photography sites like Flickr or even DeviantArt. As I'm looking through reference, I do a lot of sketching. I know I definitely want this sort of side angle. I think it will work for a number of my scenes. As much as I know this will be a lot of work, if I can cut down on the number of angles I need to tell my story, it will definitely save me a lot of time. Now, when I'm sketching, I like to focus on ratios. You wanna map out the position and size of something relative to the other things you already drew. If you look at two points and then a third that's between those two points, is it halfway between or maybe a third? What's the ratio? Once you figure that out for what you're looking at, you can draw it in. Don't just draw shapes all willy-nilly. I like to try and isolate the points in my head and ignore all the details while I'm trying to do the sketch. The details can cause optical illusions that can screw up your perception. If you're finding you're too easily distracted by all those details, you could always literally measure if you want it to be perfect. As much as I could easily take a photo of this sketch or even scan it in, I just did a new sketch on my computer. I used to scan in my sketches before I was comfortable doing sketches directly on my computer, but now that's just an extra step I couldn't be bothered to do. I'd much rather just do a new sketch, cause it's just another drawing, right? Probably takes just as long. As I start to sketch, I try to define the main shapes first the largest shapes before I moved to the details. I personally didn't copy the reference perfectly. Before I got into animation, I did caricatures for several years as a summer job, and now I just like everything better when it's a little bit of a caricature. I think what an artist does to change an image by processing it is, in my opinion, super important. And by doing this, I can achieve the goal of making it realistic but not a perfect copy. So I accidentally lost some footage here of me refining the sketch in a second layer. Basically, I just turned the original sketch transparent and redrew it with a finer line and tried to represent more of the little details. Generally, I tried to keep the exaggerated proportions of the sketch, but I also fixed some proportions and shapes that seemed a little too off. But now that I have the refined drawing done, I can turn my first sketch layer off and start blocking in the final painting. In my art with line work, I do this trick where I have my color blocked out aliased all in the same layer. I do that technique in some of my other videos if you want to check them out, but since I don't have lines here to hide the alias edges, I'm doing it anti-aliased and making each shape its own layer. When I'm doing this method of separating every part onto its own layer, it's super important to keep your layers organized. 
I don't necessarily label every layer. I just do enough so that I can find everything. It can very quickly become a mess of a million layers if you don't organize them from the start. Having worked in animation, often you have to open other people's files. And if they are just a disaster where you can't find anything, it's just the most aggravating thing and everyone will hate you. So don't be disorganized if you want to work with people because they'll hate you. Anyway, with many of these shapes, you can see that I'm blocking them in using some of Photoshop's vector tools. And let me just show you how they work. With the pen tool, you can click and drag. Where you click creates a node, and as you drag, you adjust the handlebars. Just don't forget to close the shape by clicking on the starting node. I like to use the path setting to make a selection and fill it, but you can just as easily use the shape setting and rasterize the layer. I personally like to rasterize my vector layers so that I can paint on them and conserve layers. Sometimes, rather than using the pen tool, I will make an ellipse and use the direct selection tool to adjust the nodes. This way I can make an oval pretty quickly and then I have four nodes to work with. I can drag the handlebars around and make some pretty crazy shapes. Four nodes isn't enough for all shapes, but you can always add nodes using the pen tool if you need them. Sometimes when I don't need the same precision, I'll use the hard round brush tool because making those perfect shapes is super nice, but it's also very slow. So I only really do it when I have to. You can see that I'm not making the legs in vector. Nope, not that obsessed with perfection. Hard round brush all the way. With the legs, I'm making each part a different color, just so I can see my different sections more easily. These colors do exist in the legs, but it transitions more gradually. For the legs on the other side of the body, I just duplicate the near ones and transform them because I'm lazy. I didn't really sketch these legs, and I can't really see them on my reference, so... I just estimate where they should go based on the surface the fly is resting on. I wouldn't have even bothered if this was just a flat image because you can't see them. But because I intend to animate this, they might need to be visible at some point, so I drew them in. Now. I'm no expert on fly anatomy, so I don't know what this thing is near the base of the wing. But it's in my references, so I drew it. If this was more of a cartoon, I might have simplified it out. But I think if you leave these sort of things out in realistic drawings, even though you don't know what they are, it makes it less realistic. In a sort of subconscious, back of the mind, something just isn't quite right and I don't know what it is sort of way. Now I'm real curious. I have to look it up. Hmm, so the stick out bits are called haltiers. And I guess they sort of flap like mini wings. It says here they are attached to sensory organs called capaniform cecilia and chordotinal organs. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Apparently, the haltiers flapping independently from the wings give the fly gyroscopic information to interpret and correct its position in space. Huh. Neato burrito. You learn new things every day. So at this point, I'm just adding the little veins on the wings. For this, I used vector lines just so I can adjust them and tweak them as I figured out where they should go. It's kind of a complex pattern and it's easier this way. I did draw some of the pieces freehand, but you know, whatever works. And with that, I'm done blocking it in. Yeah! Yeah! So the next step 
is to add shading and any color changes and details and everything. Usually I put the highlights on after the shadows. And for this fly, I'm working from section to section, starting with the wings. Now here's where your file can become messy very quickly. All the base shapes I use for blocking in, I make sure that I lock the transparency. It's this little button in the layers panel. I then proceed to paint all the major shadows and color shifts on that layer. Then on other layers, I add highlights, details, textures, and anything else. I like to use layer folders to organize. And as you can see, I put all my wing layers in my wing folder. I try to keep everything inside that folder in as few layers as possible without flattening anything that I might want to alter independently. There's no exact science to this, but the hope is that you can find a layer if you need to fix it later. After the wing, I move on to the body. This thorax part of the body definitely looks like a lumpy mess. I spend some time sketching out the lumps and sections, but often it's not even really defined in the reference. And based on shading, it was hard to tell what the shape was supposed to be. And since my drawing was a bit of a caricature, I couldn't really just copy it exactly. I just did my best. And I tried to make sure that not only each lump had shading, but to also keep in mind general shading of the whole area. By that I mean I was making sure that the lightest lights in the underside were still darker than the lightest light on the top part. Now on the fly's posterior, the wing was casting a fairly large shadow through the middle of that section. Things like drop shadows are a good thing to keep in mind for when you don't have a perfect reference. They're often overlooked, but they can add a great deal of realism to your piece of art. The fly's butt section also had some sectioning but this time it wasn't a lumpy mess. They definitely had a little more sense to them. One of my favorite parts to do was adding all those little hairs. They are just simple black lines, but they make it so much more detailed looking. I wanted these hairs to have a taper to them, so as I was drawing the hairs, I would glyph the pin towards the end so the line was nice and pointy. You can also do the reverse, where you start with the pen lifted off, and then you press harder and harder. And boy, there were a lot of hairs. It's definitely a bit tedious, but I'm pretty happy with how it looks so far. Moving on to the head. The fly's eyes have a texture to them. They're a million little lenses, making it kind of the texture of a basketball. For this, I used a texture brush. I'm not really sure which one. Definitely some kind of speckly one. I could have spent the time tediously drawing each tiny lens. I know that kind of detail impresses people, but is it worth it to me for this? No. I'd rather do something else with my time, thanks. Another thing that's particularly obvious on the eye is the light hitting the bottom of the eye. That's the light that's bouncing off the surface the fly is sitting on and reflecting upwards from underneath. It's a lot less powerful than the main light, but you can often see it and by including it, it adds a neat effect and makes it look a lot more realistic. As I go, you can see that I use the same process repeated for each section. I generally start with the shading and any color changes, add details, add highlights, then cover it with hairs. Yeah, all those hairs. And then as I finish up that new section, I'll go back over the other sections and tweak it until I think it looks nice and cohesive. On to the legs. Those sexy, sexy legs. Okay, they're not that sexy. Yet. Just wait until I cover them with hairs. <laughs> I know, I know. Flies are gross. But there's something kind of beautiful about them. 
I mean, looking through some of the macro photography references that I used of flies, some of them are just so gorgeous. All the colors and textures. Some of their exoskeletons have this neat color shifting quality. I always find that taking the time to really study something, to paint it, gives me a new appreciation for it. Even if it's something that's pretty gross, like a fly. Now that the fly is just about done, I make sure to add a drop shadow. What I like to do is create a black layer and paint the shadow in a mask on that layer. What the mask does is allow you to paint in that exact level of transparency, whether it's 30% or 50% or 80%, it doesn't matter. You can draw in that partial transparency. You can even eye drop a level of transparency in the mask. And I find that really handy. Masks are awesome. After I finish the drop shadow, I just look it over and do some final tweaks. So there it is, my realistic fly painting all finished. Isn't it beautiful? It's a little bit creepy. I'll admit that. It's a fly. But I bet you want to see how I animated it. Okay, you've earned it. Here's the final animation. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of these videos, make sure to subscribe. I was thinking about making a video about how I did that whole 3D effect thing. And if you'd like to see that, make sure to let me know down in the comments. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.